Hi, this is Eric from Life Debared Rentals, and today we're going to go over the setup and usage of the Phantom uh, HD Gold. Uh, first thing, set up the camera on the base plate, on the slider, put on the EVF. EVF connection is this Lemo pin right here on this side of the body. Mount your lens. This is where the Cinemag goes, so we'll put that on before we power up the camera. So we can remove the Cinemag cover. Pay close attention not to touch or to damage these pins. They're very uh, uh, fragile. So we'll take our Cinemag and we'll insert it with the two pins facing forward like this. And then we'll lock it down. Once that's done, we'll grab the large power supply. This is supplied in your kit. This has a red three pin limo on the back um, and that will plug into the back of the camera on the red limo receiver. The camera will power up immediately when plugged in. There is no power button so this will power up as soon as you plug power into it. It's important to note that this is a 24 volt camera so V mounts or, or gold mounts will not work. Uh, you'll either have to use a dolly pack from us or another 24 volt source. Um, if you're plugging into wall power using a generator, it has to be a crystal sink. A uh, true sign generator should be at least uh, 2,000 watts. All right, so once it's powered up, we can use this in a few different ways. We can look through the eyepiece to operate it, or we can remove the eyepiece uh, and use the monitor. There's this button on the bottom here to release, and we can open that up. And this becomes a little 3-inch monitor. Now that we have the camera powered up, we're going to look for a few things on the screen here. First thing, we're going to make sure it says mag ready. That means that the mag is initialized and ready to go. You should have full lights on the back here and a, a mag power light. As you use up space, the lights will decrease down until you have no space left. Uh, on the screen here, we're going to see a live feed up in this corner, the little phantom icon. That will tell you if you're rolling or not. So currently green, that means we're not. It'll turn red when we're recording. We'll have our time code, live, that tells us if it's a live image or if we're in playback mode. The mag, so mag ready means that the mag is ready to go uh, and we're ready to record and tells us how much space is remaining. Down here we'll have our resolution, our frame rate, our shutter speed. This is our playback and record icon on how much space is being used on the mag and how many frames. Uh, and how long our record time is. So 40 seconds at 100 frames, that'll get smaller as we, uh, as we go at higher speed. So that's telling us how much space is on the volatile memory. All right, now that the camera is heated up, uh, warmed up and ready to go, um, we're gonna ca black calibrate the camera for the first time. The black shading is gonna need to be done every five to 10 minutes as you're recording. So we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and put on the lens cap. We're gonna put it on our lens. We're going to enter the menu system by pressing the uh, rotary knob. We can scroll through the menu using the thumb wheel and then press it into select. So the first thing we're going to do is set our frame rate. So we're going to select and move to frame rate. Here we can change our shutter speed. So we're going to do a 300 degree sh shutter. Uh, and then we can change our recording resolution. Uh, th so the next thing we're going to do is select again and move to page two. Here's where we'll set our black reference. So we're going to choose black reference, rotate the knob, select OK. This will set our black values, so correct black level and black color. So black standard black shading. Remove the lens cap and now we have our image back. You can get through the rest of the menus from here. Uh, and then to exit, you can press the trigger button. To begin recording, we have trigger. So we're going to press and hold the trigger button until the icon next to the live, the phantom icon turns red. As you can see, the volatile RAM is now filling with this little icon here. When that gets to the end, that means the volatile RAM is full uh, and it will just keep overwriting and looping on that overwrite. So right now we're recording. Now it's set to an end trigger, so when I hit the end, it will dump everything behind this, so everything that's passed for the last 40 seconds or whatever is full. So we're going to hit the trigger button again to stop our recording. As you'll see, it'll now stay, it'll now, the red light will go away and it's now stopped. 
Now to enter playback, we're going to press and hold the zoom button. As you can see now, we can, we're in select mode. That means we can select clips that are on the mag or clips that are in RAM. So RAM hasn't been saved to the mag yet, so it's volatile. Uh, you, if you exit this mode, you'll overwrite that RAM and it will go away. So it's important to save it down to the mag. So we're going to go to playback. So we press the zoom button. That will play forward at the frame rate that you recorded it. So right now we're at 100 frames a second. It's playing at 100 frames a second. If you press the trigger button, it'll play backwards. Press again, it will stop. Now using the thumb knob, we can scroll. So we can scroll through quickly to find the place that we want to set an in and out point. So what we'll do is we'll find the moment of the take that's, that is the best. We're going to press the rotary knob and scroll to set in. Press it again. A little marker will be set. And then we'll scroll down using the rotary knob to, to our out point. Press the rotary knob again. Select to set out. Press the no rotary knob one last time. Now from here, we're going to press the rotary knob again and scroll to save. This will save it to the Cinemag and store it on the, on the mag instead of in the camera. So now that we have it stored, we're going to press and hold the trigger button again. That'll take us back to live, and now you see we have a live image. All right, so we're going to set up the card reader so we can dump the files from the Cinemag. So we're going to take the cap off. Same thing as the camera. We want to be careful of these pins. They're delicate. We don't want to damage them or get any foreign objects in there. We'll take our cine mag, put the two pins on the back, we'll lock it in, and snap it down. We're going to take our red limo, same as the camera, uh, with the power supply provided. We're going to plug it into the limo connector. We're going to take our provided Cap5 network cable and the networking adapter for the laptop and plug that into the USB-C. We'll plug in the networking cable and we'll plug the other side into the card reader. All the network settings should be pre uh, preset, so it should see it automatically. We're going to plug it into the top port right here, and then we're going to power this on. Okay, moving over to the laptop. We're going to wake the laptop up. We're going to log in. We're going to open the PCC 3.5 application right here. This is how you'll control the camera or you'll download mags all from this application. So once it's booted up, you can see that we see the mag already. We can maximize that out and check that our cine files are here. We can also open the cine files to verify the file. If we want to play it back, we can't play back in real time, but we can scrub through the file using this. To download the files, you can come down here to the Save Cine. If we click on the little arrow, you can save all flash files. Uh, so save all the flash cines to file, click that, choose your location, and click save. This will now download all the files on the mag to one place. If you want to save just a single file, you can click just this, this, the single save file button. All right, once the save is complete, we can double check that the files have downloaded by going to the location that we saved them at. So for this, uh, for this demo, we saved them to uh, this folder. So we can verify the cine files are here. The next step is to format the drive. So we go back to the manager. We're going to click delete. Uh, and we're going to be continue by erasing all flash files. Click yes. That'll erase the cine drive. And then you're ready to start shooting again.